Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Play Rule the Waves as Italy, episode number 14. Um, I have done a lot of research about some budget stuff off-camera since the last video. I've actually learned a, quite a few things. Um, basically, some stuff that I already knew or had seen, but I wasn't really applying. The uh, corruption, I think, plays a, a negative role on our budget. But I've also done a lot of looking into why these numbers were so skewed. And what I've learned is basically that Austria-Hungary is included with Germany and the United States as being the nations with um, quick industrial growth during the early 19th century. I mean, 20, 20th century, 1900s. Um, so that's why Austria-Hungary's budget is going up so quickly. Although I don't know, it seems like a bug it's going up this much because it's going up faster than Germany or the United States. Now, Austria-Hungary did grow its um, industrial base pretty significantly during this period. I haven't read enough about it. I'm still looking to, through some of the resources, references that people have provided me um, on my discussion about this budget issue on the Rule of the Waves discussion forum. Uh, but basically, Austria-Hungary was actually one of the fastest growing economies in the in the early 1900s. Um, we kind of, I at least, and I'm kind of using the royal we when I say the we, uh, we kind of just assumed, or I kind of assumed that Austria-Hungary wasn't as big of an economic power because they do also, they just squandered their um, their economic resources so poorly by fighting so terribly in World War One. But it shouldn't be uh, something that you take away from their actual budget. Now, I've always thought that Italy's and Austria-Hungary's budgets were about the same in terms of navy because um, they effectively had very similar fleets. You might even say the, the Italians had bet a better World War I fleet, but Austria-Hungary had a, a decent naval fleet as well. However, I don't, I don't know enough about it um, to be... Okay, I think that what I'm trying to say here there might need to be a bigger distinguishment between the uh, economic situation for these nations and what would actually go to the Navy. Like the Austro-Hungarian naval budget was pretty sparse compared to um, com compared to the resources they had available from what I know. Anyway, so that's just a little bit to talk about the budget. It's also been mentioned to me several times. I know, um, uh, is it William? I forget the person who has been uh, well, I mean, very kind of negatively pointing out the effects of accelerating your ships. It's supposed to slow down the effect the other ships. So let's just go forward a month here. Oh, that's nice. Um, France, I would love to go to war with France again. So what the whole budget talk, okay, now that we have messages, we have no slowdowns, thank goodness. But basically this little glitch with the acceleration thing, it doesn't, it doesn't really help you. You should accelerate at most one ship this is my new kind of understanding is accelerate at most only one ship and halting and un unhalting or pausing and unpausing ship construction is worse than uh, just leaving it on and building less ships. I think that's what I was trying to understand. I mean, that makes sense from the perspective that if you have any delays, it essentially cost um, one month's build cost more to build that ship. And you're more likely to have delays along the ship is in construction, and by halting it, it is in construction longer. Yada yada yada. So the whole I know that this is a whole spiel going on in the beginning of this. However, I do want to address the fact that our budget is going to be simply lower. And this is part of the reason why I'm trying to eke out every little nook and cranny of the budget by accelerating, not accelerating, all these things. Reserve fleet, which is something I've never done. All these things are basically just my hope, my um uh, attempt to try to keep us in the running. But I think that Italy, especially in the player's hands, and I don't know why it would be different not in the player's hands, but I haven't really paid enough attention to Italy when I'm not playing as them to know whether or not they're just totally hosed by this or if it's just um, only when the player is playing as them. Uh, they're gonna be, we're gonna be in, we're gonna have some problems. We're gonna be in trouble. <laughs> so good luck to us. We're gonna try our best. With the money we have, we might as well start saving up for a new class. Um, this is gonna be a real class, not the strategic battleship we have. I think we just got, didn't we get 14 inch guns? Am I crazy? I am crazy. We need 
I saw on maybe another ship with 14 inch guns. We need better guns. Okay, no. Oh, they've actually commissioned a battle cruiser. Maybe we should do a battle cruiser next. Strategic, strategic dreadnought, yet a battle worthy battle cruiser. I don't like making battle cruisers too early though until we get engine upgrades a little bit higher up. And we're doing okay, and there's no shortages right now. So the budget the, is just increasing. Um, tensions up is fine. Let's see, uh, let me actually pay attention to these. So we will have a really hard time competing against anyone. The other thing is we really do need to get into a war and we need to win it. We need to win it convincingly enough that we can gain some kind of points. I guess that the small war rep reparations that we got uh, has mechanically zero effect on our national budget. So the way the budget works, by the way, just so you're uh, just in case you're curious, and maybe you already know this, but there's a national budget which is hidden from us, um, which is based on yeah base resources and possessions. These are the colonies. This is base resources. You can see the colonies don't really contribute much. Um, now our base resources are what is going to be very inferior to Austria-Hungary. And if we looked at the start of the game, these should have been comparable, or maybe even the same. But Austria-Hungary has a, a higher multiplicative effect for their industrial growth, um, and it I think it triggers more often as well. So this just, just means that we're in worse shape. Uh, but from this, you can see that this is not equal to our budget. I mean, this our yearly budget is huge. Is, Wait, is it just 12 times this? I don't think so. 8 times 12. Uh, 96. So, I don't think so. But um, how I understand this is, let's just say that this is our national budget, and let's say this is uh, times an, another 1,000. That This is supposed to be in billions, so that this makes more sense. Uh, we then get a, a small amount of that, for the naval budget. Obviously, the government has to do other things besides build ships. It has to, you know, deal with the army. It has to do social programs, all these things. So um, that's how I understand it, is that you get, this is the base amount the nation has. And these little budget up, budget down things only, only change the amount of this money that your government gives you, which also can lead to unrest if your yearly budget is too high a percentage of the national budget. That's my understanding. And people, I'm just um, trying to really tell everything I know about the situation so that one, people who don't know can learn, and two, so that if I'm saying anything incorrectly, I can be corrected. All right, well, I don't, we're waiting for the next ship, but I think technology-wise, we might be waiting. So let's just start to refit, let's start to refit these ships, which means the Africanus first. And although we did have the... Uh, we did refit, what did we refit with these guys? Oh, okay, we have more powerful, we have quality one. I did not know that, good lord. I thought we got quality one six inch guns though. Great Britain has quality one 12 inch guns, are you kidding me? Okay, well we're on good terms with Great Britain. We have, te I mean, despite the tensions rising a little bit, we technically are in an alliance with them. So let's go ahead and do this kind of crazy thing. What we're gonna do is refit these ships with the better 12 inch guns, if I can, I think I can. I think I can, I think I can. Okay, so rebuild all three, correct. It's gonna cost us a fair amount. The Regulus has to be rebuilt. Can it be rebuilt here? Can I do this? I can, amazing. It doesn't really make sense to me that I can do this, but we will rebuild all our ships to uh, quality 12 inch guns. And after this, since we won't need the 12 inch guns improvements, we'll move them back to our home docks. Can I do this? I just feel like you shouldn't be able to change where they're being built at just for the refits. But okay, so we're, <laughs> we're really cheesing the system here. <laughs> we're sending our ships over to be rebuilt uh, with better guns. Basically this is, maybe we can pretend that since this is an agreement with the, we, are, we have an agreement with the Royal Navy with Great Britain, they're allowing our uh, their superior gun technology to be used on our ships. Um, by all means, we definitely need the money right now. OK, 
Okay, we don't really need the higher destroyers, but that's fine. Ah, yeah, eight additional cruisers. I would say of course, because we could use the budget and this is in October. So, so in February, we'll have to, to buy these actually. Okay. Um, are we hitting any shortages though? Yeah, so we aren't. I think with two accelerated ships, we're doing okay, to be honest. Oh yes, we definitely want super proposed B tours. This is the best, this is gonna be great. We have, okay, we only have three center line available to us. So I think we're still better off with the HMS Dreadnought type configuration with the two, with if our ships like this, wow, stern. Um, we still want the one and then the two wings and then the, uh, so one, two, three, four, and then five for our rear. And we can do aft center line um, superimposed so that we don't have to pay the extra penalty for the, the aft turrets. Okay, but yeah, anyways, we need this technology. That's very important. Even though we have the advantage in ship design to begin with, let's just not mess with anything here. We're gonna have to refit all the Chibo Gloriosos as soon as they come in, but that's that's fine. And we have a couple more months before we have to build these cruisers. Okay. And then we'll, yeah, so this is crazy. We're gonna do all of our ships from Great Britain and then come back and do them all again from our yards for a second wave of improvements to get them with quality six inch, um, quality one, six inch guns. Doing everything, everything we can here. Okay, our technology, we need everything. We're gonna go into the negative here if we continue, but I don't see any way around it. Unless we halt the Regulus for a month. That's okay with me. It says we're still gonna go into the negative. Let's see if that's true. It is true. National hero. Okay, fine. that's fine. Um, one more month. I'm gonna be fine with the negative budget. I don't care about prestige. It just doesn't matter enough to me to warrant changing anything. Yeah, 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 I get it. Um, yeah, I, I understand. Oh, yes, absolutely. Oh God, okay, that, that escalated very quickly. <laughs> okay, fight it. Fight it, I don't care, I'll fight it. We have our three Chivo Gloriosos out on their ex on their maiden voyage. These are strategic dreadnoughts, mind you, but I think at this point, they're actually sufficient. We'll find out in a moment, because we don't have any um, escorts. I don't know why, why we don't have any escorts is kind of beyond me. Maybe because they're all reserve fleet? Anyway. Um, these are pretty quick ships. That's one huge advantage we have. Let me make sure the screen is good. It is. I love that I don't have to readjust things. So we are on the correct wind side. Let's move up and then, oh, armored cruisers. Well, this is a lot of ships. I assume armored cruisers and then battle fleet below that. We're not close enough yet on another unknown ship. This might be their scouting fleet. Oh, the St. George class. <laughs> the St. George, if you were with me that long ago, when I played as um, the Austro-Hungarians, the Song George was my um, hero armored cruiser. Went one verse three and still came out ahead. And uh, from there it was already a legend, but also performed well in other battles. So this is probably their battle fleet up there. I'm not gonna speed up yet. Just kidding, I guess I will. Um, Cause I, I mean, if I get ki kills on armored cruisers, why would I complain about that? Revenge. Okay, start doing some damage. And uh, we don't want to turn too much because we want to give our ships some time to land some hits. Should be in good shape, although we don't. We do have pretty weak armor, but it should be way better than what we're dealing with here. So we've had a few hits. I see one penetrating hit, another penetrating hit, another penetrating hit, another one. But we have hit the Sunk George a few times as well. I don't know which one, if they're all the same class, but... Uh, six inch guns. Let's see if we've been hitting anything. We did hit it with a 12 inch gun. Let's go one uh, turn at a time here. Okay, that, that's not convincing. I don't think so. So um, the same person, I think it's William, I forget, goes by like Glim on the forum. Um, you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> the person who 
um, has been commenting a lot. I don't know when he catches... He, he's a little bit behind in the series, I think, because he was commenting on videos a little behind time, but when he catches up to this video, he was mentioning that uh, turning your ships is very bad because um, even small deviations in course could have big impacts on fire uh, your um, your ability to correctly target the ship, your ranging and all that. So your accuracy, it should come down to. However, I don't notice that big of a difference. Like when I turn, when I don't turn, just from experience, you know, and I think he's on 20 playthroughs, so he's very experienced himself, but I'm pr probably on about the same myself. And I haven't noticed um, that big of a difference. Now, I don't have torpedoes, so we don't actually know torpedo ranges, but what is the speed of these ships? I think we're, we are the same speed? Oh, so we should sink all three of these. This is gonna be a fantastic start. Let's move right on in then. Oh man, okay. Still seeing a lot of hits from them. Okay, now this is better. That's better. Whoops, I missed that last one. We can still see it. Um, Splinter for its uptakes, okay. Not too bad, some splinters damage hole, okay, fine. We're at least ahead of them, so in terms of, okay, there are their other ships, let's see what we're dealing with here. 11 inch guns, I'm not, a very low deck. This is about equivalent to my ships, besides being much faster. Two of those, I think we'd be okay with dealing with. I'd rather just basically get in, kill these St. Georges if I can, and then uh, move away. And we're definitely landing some hits here. Okay, let's see what happened there. I should, probably shouldn't, I should have gone turn by turn, but yeah, we, we're still doing a lot of damage and we are hitting, that one doesn't have as much damage. I think this one is the one with the damage. Let's go into them. Let's pursue, basically. Their light cruisers might try to clear out for them. They have three Lisas. I think we're capable of defeating these as well. They're only 11 inch guns. Nine versus my, what is my belt? Like eight, eight and a half. You know, it's almost the same. Crew quality is very low from the Lombardi though. I think she was just, she hasn't even worked up yet, I believe. 16,000 versus 90,000 means simply that they have more hit points because displacement does equal hit points to a degree. I mean, a little bit of flooding is more important on a smaller ship than a bigger one. I still am very surprised that the St. Georges can all move combat speed. And by the way, here's one of our minesweepers. <laughs> well, she disappeared now, but we're almost at port, which means we can be a little bit more daring as well. Like force it, really force things because, oh yeah, this St. George is off, so we can at least target one. One kills, at least one kill. <laughs> Let's get it done. Unknown ship, that might be their actual battle line, but if it's not, I'm not concerned. Let's keep going. Okay, get those hits. I think we're okay, just keep pushing. There's another armored cruiser. There's the, okay, now this is what I'm interested in seeing. They're firing already, although what? Quality one would make our range shorter, so they're Probably dealing with quality one, 11 inch guns or quality, at least quality zero. Somehow it's longer range than I'm. And we're not gonna be able to fight these as well. They are also faster than us. So we're gonna try to kill this ship, maybe sink one other and then retreat from combat, disengage. We don't say retreat, we just say tactically withdraw. But, oh gosh, we must be doing a good job. And where are these hits landing now? On the one that's probably already sinking, unfortunately. I was hoping that we'd be landing a few more on the one closest to us. She had, they all have the wind advantage now as well, which is problematic, but with so many individuals shooting at us, the number of splashes near these ships should really prevent good ranging of theirs. And damn, unfortunately, it seems to be happening exactly the opposite, although that we don't have many ships shooting at this St. George, she is unscathed for the last few turns, last few minutes. We're not turning, and I'm not noticing any improvement of our ranging. Okay, finally, yes, a hit. And another one. Yes, good, very good. Just in time. We need to be fast enough to get out of here, though, so... Um, you know what, let's not risk it. These are strategic dreadnoughts. 
they are not supposed to be fighting. I mean, it's okay for them to fight right now because, you know, this is, they're still effective. But let's just pull off. Go ahead and go back. Make sure this other armored cruiser is going to sink and disengage. So a nice first engagement, I would say, as long as everything goes well. Getting home is the important thing now. I mean, we're heading right to port, though, so this is kind of perfect. We're kind of steering the direction of this ship, so... Uh, it looks like they are tracking us down. What's the Etruria's speed? You are only at a max speed of 17, unfortunately, so you will be caught up. This is where, obviously, not having escort ships hurts us a lot. How's the Etruria? Pause. Pause! <laughs> okay, there. The Etruria has now detached. So this is good. We'll move this way with them, and you will go just max speed towards port. Good. It's going to be very effective at causing them to disengage, I believe. I believe. Okay, good. There's their turn. And now we're free, I think, to head to port. I have to probably just space bar this through one minute at a time because I'm worried that something will happen. And if it does, I won't be able to react because it doesn't look like the space bar works immediately. I mean, we're still landing a few hits, which is great. Oof, well, there's a terrible broadside for us. Chibo Glorioso, go, go home. You did it, you covered um, her retreat. That's enough to port with ye. We're still landing a few hits as well. Um, this is where having rear firing, super firing, I should say, would have been nice. I think we're gonna be okay though. Yeah, we've taken quite a few hits, and we may not win the battle in the end, but as long as we sink one of their armored cruisers, I'll feel a little more comfortable. Oh, uh, 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 uh. Okay, Lombardi, now you're the one who has to peel off and force these guys to disengage. And even the Etruria, probably. Okay, what's your max speed is 17? Okay, that's good. I think we can still get back in time then. Okay, they swung. That, that swinging action was probably all we needed to be safe. Crazy. Crazy little action here. A few hits on the Lombardi. It looks like the Glorioso is going to reattach at the most inconvenient of times. But we're almost there. Not much longer before we get to port. Although, God, we're going slow. Yes. Perfect. It's done. Heck of a fight. Heck of a fight. I'm kind of hoping that they'll go, well, four inch. Never mind. Fantastic. Okay, they actually did sink this. We did not sink that armored cruiser. I knew it. You know what? I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. God. We pummeled the crap out of it, too. In fact, we, did we end up losing this? Yeah, they won a major victory out of this. Believe it or not. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> they had flooding when they ended the game, and they still didn't sink? This is questionable. I would say this is questionable. <laughs> I... Look. There's almost no way the game cheats, right? And actually... What? They had every single torpedo under submerged torpedo thing destroyed and they did not sink. I, I mean, I'm starting to call into question. Look, from experience, if this is my ship, it sinks every time. Especially with flooding left over at the end of uh, the combat, which it had um, supposedly another. I don't know. When the combat ends, it's supposed to run for like another 300 minutes or something so that sinking ships have a chance to sink. This has got to be like the... the uh, pff, what better opportunity would a ship have to sink? 
Wow, we actually destroyed a turret with the one of our gunfire. Now you should be able to see deck extended and stuff like this. Where somebody was mentioning this? Their actual. So they only have three inch guns for their secondary, and they have quality negative one. How were they able to fire at me before I was firing at them? That I don't understand. Okay, so this is a total mystery to me. I don't understand anything about how this fight worked. To me, it seems like they should have lost this one. They should have lost the armored cruiser. Very disappointing. I would say this is an extremely disappointing start. It just, it shouldn't, it shouldn't have gone this way. All right, let's get everyone to active fleet, obviously. Everyone to active fleet. Minesweepers to Coastal Patrol. And uh, uh, we need to refit these ships. Great Britain will help, kind of, but it's not going to help in terms of blockade. Now, we might even be blockaded if we're not careful. But this is our chance to, I mean, despite losing our first engagement, which I'm still skeptical about, um, this is still our opportunity to increase our budget by winning a very convincing war against Austria-Hungary. So since these are uh, obsolete, I'm just, I have to refit them. We don't have better, but we do have better six inch guns, right? Yes, okay, good. Wait, we have quality, good, okay. Yeah, let's just redo that. You never know, there's little bugs all over the place. Maybe upgrading to a powerful six inch guns twice would cost more money, I don't know. And we'll save this. Oh, you need central firing too, okay. Save that new design as that. And the Splata will, will be rebuilt with that soon as well. By the way, I hope to God that I already replaced central firing on this. Central, central firing, good. And these are central firing as well. That's good to know. So the light cruisers also have to be upgraded though. And it is March. I guess the build requirements don't take effect if the, you go to war, because I was supposed to build some cruisers. I still kind of want to build more cruisers, but let's instead build an entirely new cruiser when we have the money, which is should be when all these ships return. So we'll probably face blockade for a little bit here. I don't see any way around it, honestly. Well, you know what? We're just going to have to go negative. We should have all these back. Honestly, This when it gets to zero months, it's obviously like a bug, or it was delayed, or it should have been released, and it didn't. So whatever. Okay, machinery, stuff like this, another fleet battle, we'll accept again. 27 minutes, good god. This is a lot of fighting. And it's a true fleet battle this time. We don't have anybody on reserve fleet, so we expected something better. Now, two of our dreadnoughts are still here, that's good. We have actual fleets with us this time, that's good. I mean, support ships. Spilato's there. Okay, well, we are already 28 minutes into this video, so I'm actually just going to tease you, unfortunately, and call this video to a close here. Um, and we'll start off the next one, next video, with a nice big fleet fight. This probably is going to be the one that changes, that makes the difference in the war, because we're still close enough to port, by the way, that we can, like, we absolutely have to make sure we sink those ships this time. But, uh, God, I cannot believe that armored cruiser didn't sink. It's a huge difference. It's six strategic points. Or is it five? Five strategic points. But they, uh, I mean, and that ship's back in like two months. It's like all that work we did was for nothing. But, but okay, anyways, until the next episode, thanks for watching and take care.